Hello there guys, it's Joey. So I'm going to talk to you day, today about fly agaric, agaric, which is a mushroom. <laughs> and I'm incorporating it into this sort of amusing video. Uh, there's a few things that I wanted to talk about and muse about and discuss and really sort of get out there and talk about. So Firstly and foremostly, I purchased some fly agaric, agaric <laughs> uh, from Witch and Wood, whom I adore. And this is it. It's in this beautiful tiny little bottle with a little cap that's made to look like the toadstool. Yeah, uh, fly agaric is it, the, the bright red toadstool, if you don't know. And it came in this adorable little bottle. Isn't that cute? It's the cutest thing. So they're situated in Wales, I believe, and uh, they have access to it. And they charged not a cheap price, but not the usual standard of price that I have seen here in the UK. So I was like, given how cute the bottle was, I was like, that bottle is right up my street. It's so cute. And I wanted some of this. This is one of the ones that I considered uh, for my birthday poisonous herbs and ended up getting the other three and I was just too tempted I was like I've got to I've got to try it but one of the main reasons that I decided to grab it is that I've been seeing imagery of fly agaric around like a lot and sometimes when it's time to work with a certain energy or you're seeing pictures of a certain thing everywhere it's that there's a message in it for you that there is a reason that you're seeing all this imagery and symbolism and it's time to really look at that and what it means and kind of apply it to a, a spiritual question or it's telling you something you need to know something along those lines so we're going to go into depth with that as well, and I have some of my items, my handcrafted items in the background. I just... There we go. And the reason for this ties into the energy of the fly agaric and where my thought process is at. So this, as you've already seen, is the Blade of Avalon spell oil which is my own work, my own creation. This is uh, Blade Over Shield, which is my own work, my own creation, my own recipe made from scratch. And these are two Morrigan-based energies that the Morrigan was insistent on. Uh, Blade of Shield has been around for years and years and years now through the store as well. And Blade of Avalon is new one from the Samhain where Mama was like, this is what I want and this is what you're going to do and rah, 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 and do it. And I was like, okay, Mama, let's get underway. And in the background, we have one of my spell cauldrons, which are my original design and have been on store now for th three years. Uh, something along those lines. And the great thing about all of my products is that you can go back and look at all the videos. The videos are there from the very beginning, they've never been removed. Uh, you can see and hear every story, every energy, every reasoning. Uh, I don't believe in creating spiritual based products that don't have a soul. And if I was to rip off somebody else's ideas, which I would never do because I think it's the lowest form of ethics when involved in spiritual selling, then it wouldn't have a soul. And I absolutely believe in creating energy weaving, energy matrixes, the combination of all things between colour magic, herb magic, essential oil magic, and aromatherapy and that goes along with it, uh, the interweaving of stories and energies and symbolism and gods and goddess energies and totem energies and they all interweave and what I've said on the store page particularly with regards to imbuing which I have defined on the Facebook page and if you go to www.facebook.com 
facebook.com forward slash starry eyed supplies you can get all that information for your book of shadows there but I talk about imbuing and what imbuing means to me and the idea that each product should sing a song and the many many voices that are involved in the process the herbs the energies the plant davers uh, that you are meant to work with in harmony to harvest local herbs and you form bonds and relationships with the land as part of your witchcraft and your creation process and then your creativity comes out to the full uh, when you are honest and working with integrity and I'm very very proud to say that at no point will I compromise ethics for profit and I talked about this on the Witch and Wood video where I had purchased some of their products and I purchased the Blackthorn Goblins Cross from Mama Morrigan it's a protective amulet along with a couple of other bits from them and I talked about it then and I've had a couple of questions since and I just want to sort of reiterate that I will not recreate products that somebody else has already created for the sake of profit I think it's despicable I think it's just bottom level basic witchery uh, if you go check out badwitches.es which is a online witches website who have accepted to date two of my essays and published them and I'm among amazing company I think there are some amazing witches on there and they will explain the idea of between basic and badass and transcending from basic to badass in terms of witchery and not compromising who you are as a person, compromising your ethics, compromising your morals and all that just to make a buck or for whatever reason to try and drive other people into the ground. And there's been a lot of talk around stores lately and I do frequent a couple of, of witchcraft stores who I believe uphold those ethics and they are the only sorts of people I will purchase from. Uh, it's for example uh, Nadia has the most incredible incenses. I'm going to be saving up and buying some of her stick incenses at some point soon, hopefully. It's just uh, with when finances allow. And Witch and Wood on Etsy are amazing. And Wild Spirit Weaver, who does her incredible artwork on antlers that are naturally shed, so they uphold good values uh, from a, a witch's point of view and I think having integrity and working with real ethics is really a key theme uh, of, of Fly Agaric. It's about the shamanistic pathways. It's... I'm going to read to you from the poisonous plants of Great Britain as well as a little bit of information I grabbed off the internet because uh, the poisonous herbs don't tend to get a lot of love in herbal compendiums. It's not in the compendium, it's, I don't think it's in uh, Cunningham's book, I didn't check. But I wanted a more in-depth uh, sort of realisation of why I wanted to fly agaric. And the poisonous herbs tend to get avoided by a lot of people. They don't want people uh, hurting themselves, basically. Fly Agaric assists Siberian shaman in their journey to the world of spirits and attaining supernatural prowess of movement and sight. In the Hindu Kush, it is known as Raven's Bread. So, Mama was after this basically, and this is actually sitting on Mama's, or Mama Morrigan's altar. It can be made into a beverage or massaged into the skin with henbane as an intoxicant. Oh, this is awesome. The Sami people of Northern Europe dry the caps and use them to attract the herds of reindeer who love eating them. The reindeer's urine becomes psychoactive and is ritually consumed to aid with spirit walking, the animal's body having neutralised some of the toxic components. Don't eat fly agaric, it's, it's toxic. Okay. And then we're going to have a look at the spiritual meanings from... Ooh, thank you. 
It's not proven, but it is believed that the Celts of the British Isles were users of fly agaric as a hallucinogenic to aid in other world journeys to the other world. That didn't work at all. Shamanistic journeys to the other world. Its main use was in mainland Europe and Siberia. Even today there is a custom to give as a hostess present or New Year's celebrations a little wooden fly agaric mushroom, often with a ladybug on it, for good fortune in the new year. Isn't that lovely? Like uh, entering into a new year is, is celebrated with this little mushroom. In Siberia, shamans eat fly agaric in order to enter a clairvoyant trance state and mobilise their shamanistic powers of healing. Bum, 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 bum. The fly agaric employs the human imagination for centuries. European history and culture has many myths. The German saying that the red toadstool mushroom is a sign of good luck points to a deep devotion to the fly agaric mushroom. Thus, it is described that Wotan or Woden, the German god of ecstasy and knowledge, was responsible for bringing it to the people. According to legend, Wotan rides through the sky at winter solstice, and where the foam dripping from the mouth of his horse, Slethnir, fell to the ground, nine months later the red mushrooms were sprouted. Popular belief also associates the fly agaric with witches, wizards and wise women, and depending on the occasion, with pleasure or calamity. It was also suspected to be one of the ingredients of the famous flying ointments. In shamanistic cultures, the fly agaric is counted among the sacred plants that were used by shamans to achieve an ecstatic state to delve into the other world. Among Siberian shamans, it is still in use. Today you can still find imaginative representations of the red mushroom on old postcards, children book illustrations and comics. They are, a seat, they are popular as a seat for garden gnomes, as piggy banks, as sock knitting aids and Christmas tree ornaments, as marzipan decorations or cakes or lucky charm for New Year's. Hmm. The amount of psychoactive substance they contain depends on where they grow and the weather and certain other factors. Just don't eat it, to be honest. Uh, unless, you, you know, just don't eat it. <laughs> um, if, if you're interested in mushroom magic. And it really, really came to me at this time for this sort of, this rebirthing process. I've been talking a little bit about the idea that winter is kind of a real rebirthing time. Uh, we go through the new year at Samhain and through November and December uh, and following Yule even, uh, we really go into sort of a death state and sort of a rebirthing state and I always long for the sea which I've talked about in my Sea Priestess orb video. Uh, I really long for those energies of rebirth, of putting things to death, of stopping things that don't uh, correlate with my highest spiritual belief and self and, and really searching and through for meaning and trying not to get lost and I think where fly agaric comes into the rest of this energy is it really for me epitomizes that walking through the woods and if you don't know what you're doing then you could eat fly agaric and find yourself in a whole heap of trouble. And that's a lesson of a lot of the poisonous herbs. Sometimes they look like other herbs. Uh, henbane looks like Queen's Anne's Lace. I'm right in that one, isn't it? And um, I will check because my brain just went, is that right? I don't know if you're right. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I will check. See, even my brain goes. I don't know what I mean, even my brain go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right. I'm okay. <laughs> the brain the brain is just questioning it, which is good. It's good to doubt yourself. It's good to uh 
check your facts and make sure that you're not spilling a load of garbage into your videos. It's a fantastic thing to do. And I fully recommend always doubting everything, even your own self. So always question, always seek, always look for answers. So and it's around this time of year that I really think that we need to really take a good hard look at who we are and that can be in many, many facets. And it's good to go into the self and look at what needs to die of the self and to think, you know, how can I be a better person? How can I really seek to expand and grow as a human being? And I think about this all the time and I think that witches of real caliber do and there are others in the community of whom I have huge respect who are constantly looking to improve themselves and be the best versions of themselves even when their voices are not popular uh, with the general community uh, when they speak out against injustices and things that need to be spoken out against. The lesson of poisonous herbs is one for the more probably the more advanced practitioner. Uh, beginners aren't going to be wanting to work around or with poisonous herbs for a number of reasons. Uh, physical health is going to be one of them, uh, but also their energy is really brave, strong. Uh, they have a much higher energetic output than a lot of other herbs. It's hugely important when connecting to plant deva energies uh, that you spend the proper amount of time and respect uh, when collecting herbs, working with herbs. And this goes across when you're purchasing herbs as well to make sure uh, that you purchase from places that are ethical and have worked with the energy plant spirit. And if you are in the UK, I highly recommend Witch and Wood as well as Green Woman Crafts. She's really good. I think I've recommended Green Woman Crafts before. I'm just trying to think. Pretty sure I've recommended her before. Yeah. Green Woman Crafts is on Etsy and eBay. Sorry, my camera distracted me by the fact it said uh, it needed to charge and I was like, you're plugged in and it, I had to just push the charger in so it completely made me lose my trail of thought. And this is doubly so more important when you're working with poisonous herbs, the idea of respect, because they really do teach the witch the lesson of respect because they can harm you, they can hurt you, they can do you in. Uh, you can be in serious, serious trouble if you are pretending that you know what you're doing and you don't. It's a very important lesson of humility which I've been talking about uh, for a while. I talked about it in my essay, I talked about it in uh, previous videos and it's something that I really do truly believe is that moving on, transformation, transcending into a higher level of witchcraft and really seeking uh, comes at the cost of having one of those days, weeks, months, whatever it is, whereby you realise your inconsequential, inconsequentiality. You realise how small you are in the vastness of history, of time, of the world. Uh, I had a moment like this uh, a couple of years ago and I was travelling and I just realised I had one of those moments that hit you. How many villages and towns there are in England alone that I will never visit? How many households are full of people that I will never know and will never know me? And it was one of those <laughs> moments where you just realise how small you are in the fabric of time, society, and life in general. And it's a hugely empowering thing to really let go of your own egotistical design and realise that at the same time as having a voice can really make a difference to people at large, 
people can just as like ignore you and realizing that you are not the be all and end all of anything it, it's and it becomes a hugely empowering experience it can sound a little bit like it might be the opposite like you might feel unempowered and uninspired i think really it depends on how you take this lesson i think this is a lesson that resounds with poisonous herbs uh, you might think you're the top of the food chain human but you eat that and you're dead and uh, I think that's a really good lesson to really think about that the world around us is far more potent is far more powerful is far more magical than we as human beings are the world around us is, is full of plants and energies that are potentially lethal, potentially harmful, as well as potentially uh, full of life and energy and magic. And there is magic within the danger, magic within the risk, magic within the possibility, and of death magic, of course, uh, working with any dark goddess energy, as you know, for those who have worked with her and anyone who ever listens to me because I'll harp on about it at length it's all about death it's all about death and death isn't as frightening as people think it is having not lived your truest self and your true path and regret are far more dangerous things and this is a lesson which I'm learning and have learned the hard way that you mustn't pa let life pass you by you mustn't let opportunity pass you by because you'll regret it. You have to live fully, to your fullest truth, to your fullest truth, not to somebody else's, not to fit in with society, not to steal from somebody else, not to pretend to be something you're not, but to figure out with all the hard work that it entails who you are and Fight for that every damn day of your life and you take yourself down a notch or 12 because you are not the be all and end all. I'm not the be all and end all. Have some humility. Get humble. Really think about where your place is in life and don't don't think of that as a way of putting yourself down, of, of uh, thinking how useless and worthless you are. Think of it as a way of accepting that you are the same as every other person on the planet. You're not higher than them, you're not lower than them, you're the same. Uh, actions are what make a person. How they behave, how they conduct themselves, and this is doubly so for those involved in the spiritual community. Take a good hard look at how your spirituality is faring based on your actions. And if things are shit, then you need to really reevaluate what you're doing, the ethics that you're holding, and your path that you're walking. I adore this path of witchcraft. It's my big love. I study it, I work hard, I continue to study and work hard. I don't uh, dismiss anything out of hand, uh, but I read and research and, and take into evaluation all the very different walks of life, all the different paths there are to be had. Uh, but I think it was Laurie Cabot that said, uh, find what your true path is and stick to it because otherwise you're just going to be taking on board too much. And for me, the Celtic path is what's true for me. The path of the Morrigan is my truth. And the way that I am creating a heart-centered business is my truth. It is centered around a deep love and a deep connection to everything I do and create. My creativity is a well. And the way that people engage is one of two ways. You're either a well or you're a drain. And people who are a well of creativity are constantly producing new ideas, new themes, new, new all the time. And this is how I feel about the store. I'll never stop. It's going to be a constant well of new ideas, new products and it depends on what it is. It can be candles, it can be incenses, it can be spell oils, it can be crow poppets, it can be spell chests, it can be ogum pendants, it can be ogum charms. I'm just listing things that are already on the store. Herbal blends, blessing salts. On and on and on and on. 
because it's a constant well of my connection to goddess, my creation, my craft, my art, my witchcraft, and I love it, and I'm proud of it. So, there you go. Uh, these have been lessons and, and thinking and musing around fly agaric and the lessons it brings with it. Many blessings.